part in guarding him. He's obviously the best player in the game. And you need multiple guys and, and, and team to, to guard him the entire game. And I just think we did a great job of that. You did look forward to guarding him. Why? why? So I'm a competitor. You know, he's, he's the best player. And, you know, I'm going to be able to tell my kids this one day. So, uh, you know, it's exciting. I love the challenge. But like I said, man, it's a team effort. All right, Nick, you were at the game. You watched mm -hmm. this. How were the Celtics so effective against LeBron James? I'd say it was three-pronged. One, as I thought they would, they have a lot of bodies you can throw at LeBron, much better than Toronto does. Pardon me. Guys, better better equipped to guard LeBron. <clears throat> Sorry, see? Sergeant. The, the, they have guys that, in Marcus Morris, yeah. who are the They have different looks. They Thank got you. bigger guys. They got some smaller guys. They got guys athletic. They got guys with tremendous reach. But what they do is collectively, they have a game plan. So if one thing's not working, they, 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 they realize that. If you're fronting LeBron in, in, the, in the low post, which they were doing, you have to be able to depend on your teammates that one is going to be ball pressure to make them lob it. And number two, that the, whoever says they're going to be on the backside helping, that they're going to help. And so, listen, they, they had a great game plan. They altered the game plan, plan throughout. It wasn't just, we're doing this, let LeBron figure it out. Once LeBron started, okay, they're guarding me this way, they would guard him slightly differently. They would bring in waves of guys. Simi Ojale only guarded him for 15 possessions, but Ojale is pound for pound one of the strongest players in the league. That wears him down. So they deserve a ton of credit, but LeBron also deserves criticism. He turned the ball over more than a half dozen times. He couldn't hit a jump shot, and he was oddly passive. It, despite all of that, despite his team having one of their worst shooting nights they will have all they had all season long, going into the fourth quarter, there was a window there. They were only down 14 points after being down 29 points at one point. And we just replayed the sequence. Two of the baskets that were made were made on LeBron. An offensive rebound given up to Marcus Morris. And I know you don't mind Marcus Smart, who's a terrible three-point shooter shooting, but LeBron could have closed him out better. Like, so in a chance where, despite playing poorly, they had a chance to overcome it, despite LeBron having his worst playoff game in a calendar year, they had a chance to overcome it. LeBron and his team let go of the rope at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and that was the end of it. So I don't think LeBron will duplicate this performance, but it was partly what Boston did, partly the coaches, partly the players, but also LeBron had the worst playoff game he's had since game three against these Celtics last year. LeBron is probably not going to come out and duplicate this performance, but how do you factor in what the role players are going to do? These role players look like what we saw in the Pacers series, certainly not what we saw in the Raptors series. I feel like they're going to be somewhere in between. I don't feel like this is a great Cavs team, so for me it's inevitable. When are they going to lose? Like one of these role players, and I thought in the Pacers series, if the Pacers had home court advantage, I thought they would have won that series because they gave away a couple games. And the Cavs having home court advantage, I believe, was the difference in them winning game number seven. The role players, you can't depend on them, but you can't talk about the role players after LeBron James played a game like that. Yesterday, he was the seventh best player, and that's Terry Rozier, only had eight points. The seventh best player on the court. So I don't care what kind of role players you have. The way this team is made, there's no way they can have victory with LeBron playing that bad. All right, another LeBron angle from last night. He had his worst game of the postseason. Yes, he scored only 15 points, turning the ball over seven times. But listen to him in his postgame press conference. He's not worried about this at all. I have zero level of concern at this stage. Um, I didn't go to college, so it's not March Madness. Um, you know, you, you get better throughout the series. You see ways you can get better throughout the series, but I've been down 0-1. I've been down 0-2. Uh, I've been down before in the postseason. Um, but for me, there's never no level of concern, no matter how bad I play tonight with seven turnovers. Um, how inefficient I was shooting the ball. Um, just as confident going into a series, no matter if it's a 0-0 series or I'm down 0-1. So we have another opportunity to, to be um, better as a ball club uh, coming in Tuesday night, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. All right, CC, would you put LeBron's level of concern at, at zero? Would you put your level of concern at zero as well? I, I understand what LeBron is trying to do. Um, he's trying to being the spokesperson for the organization and the team. He's trying to make sure that people um, just temper um, what they saw um, because that was real. You know, that was shocking for a team with that type of rest that the game was lopsided from the beginning. It was like, they weren't prepared. So I'm sure that the LeBron is, is more concerned than he's going to allow us, but 
You know, this Boston team is a different team during the regular season. Offensively, they are better. Tatum, um, <laughs> Brown, and Rozier are better scoring the basketball, 6-5 and three points more than they did during the regular season. They're a lot better offensive team, a lot better shooting team. So the Cavs and their fans, they should be more concerned than Z. I'm not concerned at all. I think the Cavs, LeBron said there that he's been down 0-1, he's been down 0-2. 0-1, he's been down a bunch. In fact, I think of the 15 series he started on the road, he's 4-11 and in his career. And I would argue those teams were better than this team that's down 0-1 right now. Well, some of those were the early Cavs teams, but regardless. No, they were, no, they were better defensively. They, they, they certainly were better defensively than this Cavs team. I agree with you. They didn't have a secondary player like Love, but regardless of that. But the down 0-2 is a different monster. LeBron's only been down 0-2 twice in the last decade in a series. Once in the NBA Finals last year, they lost in five. Once in the NBA Finals the year before, it took a historic 3-1 comeback. The reason my level of concern is close to LeBron's is his three worst games of the playoffs have been the three game ones of each series. You guys remember game one against Indiana. I came on TV and I said, if LeBron has to be the best player in the league these playoffs, not the ninth best player of the weekend. Game one against Toronto, he said it was the worst game he played all year. And then last night or yesterday afternoon, that actually was the worst game he played all year. He has rebounded in games two through four or two through seven. They got to go win game two. Like, I'm not calling it a must win, but it's damn near close to a must win. They, Boston is 8-0 at home this postseason for a reason. I think the Cavs will be fine. If they lose game two, that's a totally different situation. All right, Rockets Warriors tonight. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Stick around. Undisputed starts right now. We're back here first thing tomorrow morning.